little chat thing actually pops up here. Uh, Many Sided Dice has a wonderful, like, 500 and something page book of magical items to use within your uh, existing uh, Dungeons Dragons 5e campaigns. And Nightshade Creations has a wonderful uh, dice shaming bowl that our DM on Fridays actually, uh, Michael has in possession, is going to be raffled off by him at some point in the near future. Uh, we also wanted to say, take a quick moment and say thank you to Team MZ, who's been a huge supporter to small streamers like us. Uh, you can find them by searching on Twitter for hashtag Team MZ with four M's. That's E-M-M-M-M-S-I-E. Uh, if you're a small streamer like us and looking for some support in a great, uh, very supportive community, you can find it out with them. So with that being said, we are actually down one of our cast members today as... Dave unfortunately has a prior engagement that will prevent uh, him from being with us. And Lennon, who voices Quen, will be, well, I shouldn't say voices, but controls all of Quen as well as the voice, uh, will be joining us in just a little while. It's running a few minutes behind uh, due to transportation. So, with that being said, we'll jump into a quick recap from last week where we had. Are parties still making their way ever closer to Ataz Kahakla? With our two uh, trail alongs falling behind them in Artist Climber and Dragon Bait. Uh, not really saying much on their path, uh, but knowing that the party is heading this direction and then considering heading north to a city they know of that's on the map called Mbala. Uh, as the parties made their way through, they had a fairly close scare with a uh, somewhat friendly Stegosaurus that got rather severely attacked by a Tyrannosaur. Uh, the party declined to uh, get involved in that battle, though, and uh, made their way set up camp with Gizzard proceeding to uh, take a watch and actually running into a rather large amphibious lizard. Now, Mr. Producer, if you can follow our player's flag here, we are going to jump over to where uh... <laughs> where we will find our players roughly uh, set up here as most of our group has no idea what's going on at the moment. And, uh... Oh, no, uh... Sir, were you saying something? I Oh, I just forgot how big that guy was. Can you hear me? <laughs> yep, we got your back. Yeah, he okay. is a massively huge critter. <laughs> uh, let me just make sure that he is, in fact, huge and not just, uh... Yeah, he is huge, so that size. Uh, let me drop over. Yeah, that is accurate sizing compared to uh, our friend King Gizzard. <laughs> so as uh, we pick up where we left off last week, um, Gizzard, before we go and roll initiative, is there anything you'd be doing? Yes. I mean, they he sees be. you, you see him, the rest of the party's not really involved yet. This is a one-on-one -on -one lizard meets lizard. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Um, what I would be doing is uh, rifling through my little knapsack and pulling out as many raptor corpses as I had left, I think, which is four at the moment. And just uh, in Draconic, I'd be saying, you have nothing to fear from me. It is all right. And just, you're trying to feed this thing, or...? Yeah, I'd be throwing the corpses kind of right at its feet. <laughs> oh. So it didn't have to move any closer to me. <laughs> okay, uh, go ahead and make an animal handling check. Alright, give me something good. Come on. Can I use my inspiration? Sure. If you so have it? 
No, it's uh, we did. Oh, actually, that's a good point. Um, we've got uh, the entire party had inspiration. Who did we give the nat twenty to? Was that Solana? Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> Nearly forgot to uh, mention that. And greetings to some of our new viewers. Uh, Digitio, welcome back. And uh, wow, BLS Tulip, there is a name I have not seen in a while. Welcome to the uh, proficiency bonus stream. So let's go ahead, JJ, and uh, get that roll going. Oh, I'm nervous. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> so as you, uh, for those who are fans of older movies and have seen, uh, oh, um, what? Oh, my word. I um, Live and Let Die, the old James Bond movie starring Roger Moore. King Gizzard has started tossing these raptor corpses at this giant crocodile, and as it's slowly inching its way forward, large toothy maw notices, snaps up one, and another step forward, snaps up the second one. You know, it just keeps ever pressing closer as you keep tossing these corpses out at it. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Probably got one more action you can take before it's uh, before it's close enough to you that it's <laughs> lunchtime. <laughs> um, ooh. All right. I don't know if this will work. It probably won't. I'm going to throw up my sack of uh, root vegetables that I always keep on me. I'm just going to dump them all on the ground. And then okay. kind of like hold my hand out like you would to a unfamiliar dog. <laughs> okay, and uh, you haven't found uh, you don't have any of the uh, interesting roots, right? You didn't find any of the uh... No, it, it's literally just like swedes and turnips and Okay, just regular <laughs> run of the mill I couldn't remember if you had yeah. one of the uh, special uh, Chultis fruits oh, I haven't that even, some of your party I haven't members even begun have to look for that stuff yet Okay, so uh, go ahead and make a uh... Actually, this is not well, actually, these are sort of omnivorous, so we'll say, go ahead and just make a straight animal handling check. Something good this time, please. Oh, that's better. Yeah, it, it stops, and it does seem to be taking a couple of seconds to uh, sort of rifle through the root vegetables. But you're, uh, you get the strong sense it's not enough, and it's going to keep moving. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have faith and hold my hand out. <laughs> okay, so, and you're not gonna shout for anyone else? <laughs> nope, none of this present moment. <laughs> okay, so well, let's see. We're going to. Uh, hmm. You're trying to tame this giant crocodile-looking thing. We're brothers. We've both got this scales. Isn't gonna go well. <laughs> this isn't going to go well. Uh, it's. <laughs> well, we're going to see how it responds. If uh, See how low it rolls. Lower it rolls, better it means for gizzards, so. Uh, it doesn't seem interested, gizzard. So I'm going to say. Uh, as you're watching, it takes another step forward. Go ahead and roll initiative. All right. Because you notice oh it God. does not seem to be oh slowing God. down. And uh, welcome, welcome, Lennon. Hi. Uh, so We're just in initiative. To... Wow. Do you want yeah. everyone to roll initiative? Uh, yeah, let's have everyone go ahead and roll initiative, even though nobody else is, uh... Actually, uh, I keep forgetting. For the three elves, uh, Devine, uh, Solana, and Quen, go ahead and make a perception check for me. And then also go ahead and roll initiative as well. Because we're going to see whether or not you hear this initial actions. Okay, so Solana, you hear it. Devine, you're good you guys only trance. Uh, Lennon, unfortunately, you have no clue what's going on until someone shouts out or 
second round. Once combat actually takes off, you'll be uh, fully aware of it. But I'm really sleepy right now, I guess. <laughs> okay, then we have to do a... Uh... There we go. Rickless gonna roll. I have really got to remember to get my initiative thing set up so I do not have to open sheets every time I need to roll initiative. So we have got everybody on here. So let's see what's going on. Okay, and of course, Melek tops off the order, but is still unconscious because Gizzard has not shouted out. Dragonbait's unconscious. So, uh, actually, Solana would. Uh, hmm. Okay, so Solana, with your perception check, let me jump over here. I think you were the highest out of it. Uh, actually, no, definitely was a little higher. But with yours, you can hear there's some sort of uh, light noise going on outside, minor footfalls outside your tent. But you don't hear anything alarming at the moment. Okay, I guess I just kind of look over and see what's going on. Uh, from... Now, Rough Essay, you're looking out as you're not really sure what to be looking for other than you're hearing noise. You just sort of see Gizzard there, and as he explained, he's got, like, one hand reached out a little bit. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go... Gizzard, don't... Uh, never mind. Quiet. And... Oh, oh, okay. This could only end badly. But I, but I guess I won't attack it if Gizzard's not alarmed by it. Okay. So that will bring us up to the giant crocodile that is approaching Gizzard. And as it is, uh... Oh, I should have held my action. I always forget I can do it. As it steps forward, it takes... One swipe with its tail as it's walking forward. Oh my that god. Is a 20. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And as it finishes taking a walk right up in front of you, it's going to make its second attack and take a bite at you. Oh, oh, Holy oh. Shit. Are you dead? I, I, I'm down. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> Are you really? Are you dead? Are you down? No. Yes. <laughs> Stop it, Matt. Stop it. <laughs> I, I yep. tried to give him. I tried to give him time to call out. He didn't want to. Okay, so. <laughs> uh, he has uh, no logic. He saves. Um, <laughs> go, go ahead and make a strength check just to see if you would be grappled. Uh, basically, this is just going to decide whether or not he's spitting. Uh, at the moment, you're still in its mouth. <laughs> so we'll see what happens at the, as, it, so <laughs> as its next turn. <laughs> so, Do that lizards thing, learn? Uh, some will. The, realistically, this crocodile, probably not. No, I mean, <laughs> our lizard, doesn't he learn to, like, call for help or uh, do anything? No, he's... The, the giant crocodile probably has a higher intelligence, and it's got a chew. Sick uh, burn. Okay. <laughs> so, Mr. Gizzard, I need you to make a death save for me. <laughs> oh my god. This can only go well. Gizzard sandwich. <laughs> and it's one failure. Yes, get into it early. <laughs> so, and Gizzard, would you have made any sound, or what does Gizzard sound like as he falls unconscious? getting bitten into by this giant crocodile. I don't think I would have had time to make any sound after <laughs> getting ripped in half. 
Fair enough. So this is still a Jesus. silent fight. Yeah, so Quen is still... Uh, Quen was very sleepy and is not yet alert. Uh, Devonay, you rolled the highest out of the... Uh, out of the uh, Elven Persuasion with your meditation, so you are definitely aware that something's going on. But again, haven't really heard anything. You heard some footfalls, heard what sounded like a hard thud, and then the sound of something uh, almost like a loud chomp. Well, being a, a suspicious sort, I will uh, get up and go outside of my tent and see what I can see. So right as you walk outside of the tent, you see what appears to be an extremely large crocodile with a half-chewed-up lizard folk sort of hanging out of one side of its mouth. Honestly, Devonay would probably smirk a little bit considering she knows how many things uh, Gizzard has eaten. <laughs> And then she'll attack it, because that thing is big. Okay. Um, she's going to use a chromatic orb, but I'm not sure how this is going to work in roll 20. Okay, uh, well, go ahead and uh, click on the spell, see how it, see what pops up for us. This was one of the spells that wasn't... Um, Available, you had to type it in yourself. So. Ah, fun. Okay. Let's see here. So I can just flip through and grab my. Uh, actually, that is a nine. That is not going to hit, I don't think. But let's see. Okay, yeah, so it's. Okay, actually, yeah, it looks like you entered it uh, perfectly. It just unfortunately does not hit. As you seem to be a little distracted by Gizzard sort of flailing about inside this uh, creature's mouth. Any Anything else you're doing? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep backing up. That oh, okay. That's a good idea. So then, Not uh, very much, but... You're a fighter! Go be a meat puppet socket thing. <laughs> so was so was Gizzard. Gizzard's an idiot. He tried to feed it. <laughs> okay. Hey, so it works. I am feeding it. <laughs> Touche. Okay, so artist is unconscious. Uh, Malik's unconscious. Dragon Bait still is. That brings us back to Solana. I guess I have to heal our damn wizard. Okay. That depresses me. Okay, so this is a touch spell. It means you got to get. Oh, okay. Can I? Can I do the other one then? Healing words. The healing words. Yep. Oh, won't let me cast that one at a higher level. No, I think healing words is that only a cantrip? Not a level one. No, spell. it's level one. I'll take the six. It's all right. Oh, actually, uh, you can cast it at a higher level. Uh, it's, you may just not. Uh, I can take a look at the. Uh, so you want to cast it at a higher level? Yeah. Okay, then roll. Uh, what are you doing at level two? Yeah, let me do level two. Oh, okay, so roll an additional d4 for me. Oh, okay. there you go. That's a mighty yeah, 10 points four. to Gizzard. <laughs> what word is that, Solana? So, um, that's a bonus action. Can I do a, um... So, that is a, uh... Can I hit it with my light crossbow? Yeah. And that will definitely hit, so go ahead and roll damage. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna use movement to move a little. Okay. Can you scream and shout so we can wake up? <laughs> oh! Everybody, there's a giant crocodile! Oh my god, it's eating Gizzard alive! Wake up, everyone, now! Ah! <laughs> okay. Oh, this now has a uh, crossbow bolt sticking out of one side of it. It comes back to a... Uh... currently has Gizzard in his mouth, and let's see, is not exactly the most perceptive. So, uh, Gizzard, you're going for a ride. As... Is it going to jump on me? I'll take it. Uh, no, you're <laughs> still in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, but is it going to jump down on me? <laughs> uh, uh May in a second, but at the moment uh, is looking for Solana, who just shot at him. And is going to sort of circle around Melek's tent and take a gizzard for a ride and make a uh, tail swipe at um at Solana, which is oh, an no. 18. Yep, uh, that hits. Okay, and then I need you to make a uh, strength saving throw for me. Okay, so uh, it does 14 damage, but you manage to uh, prevent yourself from getting knocked onto the ground. And then, uh, yeah, it is going to take another chomp onto a uh, Gizzard in its mouth. Because, you know, food's present. <laughs> oh my god, it's bite is OP. And... Okay, Gizzard, go ahead and uh, roll another uh, strength check for me. We're going to see whether or not you get dropped out of the mouth this time or not. Okay, so you get bitten and just sort of cast off to the side. Well, that's good. <laughs> and once more unconscious, though. So <laughs> I need you to make another death save for me. Can do. Oh my god. <laughs> and that is a fail. So we have one fail for Gizzard. And. <laughs> This brings us to Quinn, who has just heard Solana yell out about this giant creature in the camp. Um, so Quinn is going to snap awake with uh, a fierce summery breeze in his heart. He's going to leap to his feet and shout, Charms! Monster! And then he's going to charge forward and then stabby stab it, but not before activating his spell song stance. And he's gonna cast Booming Blade on it. Okay. So go ahead and make your roll. Okay, so that is definitely going to hit, so go ahead and roll your damage. Yep. Okay, so that will hit, and give me a second. We have a uh, quick question coming in, to, uh, in through chat. So, uh, yes, the uh, croc has two attacks. So it's, it was only using the bite on to... Uh, Gizzard, the uh, attack he did against, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, against Solana was a tail attack. So, took a bite, took Gizzard with him, then, uh, for the next one, uh, down with him, and then, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, 
but second Biden is Gidget has been dropped since. And then we've got okay, is that is there? Okay. There's you wanna hit that. I apologize, just wanna make sure I'm uh acknowledging the uh people asking questions in the Twitch chat as well. And Digitio, I'm not quite sure uh, with what Gizzard eats if we anyone would consider him quality meat. Uh, and anything else you'd be doing, uh, Quen? Uh, no, I don't have a bonus action right now, so oh, that's okay. it. I'm just really sparkly and poking at it. <laughs> so that will bring us over to uh, Devon A. Well, I'm gonna try another chromatic orb. Oh, okay. So that yeah. will definitely hit. Um, what sort of uh, what sort of elemental damage are you choosing this to be? Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, fire. That seems to work good. Okay, so go ahead and roll your damage. Hey. Whoa! Whoa! Holy heat rash! That is stop. No, I think it's just damage. one of them. No, no your first roll was a crit. Oh, that's why. Okay. Double the yeah. dice, yeah. You hear this snarl and guttural sort of cry come from this thing as a bright ball of flame bursts out in the front of this creature's face. It nice. Definitely, you have definitely hurt this thing, and it is not looking pleased. Uh, anything else you'd be doing? Come and get me. Quen <laughs> <laughs> will shout to Devon A. Ah, yes! Well struck! <laughs> so as this is going on, at this point, uh, Artis has now awoken in the uh, midst of this fight and stepping out of the tent to look around and see what's going on. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Just looking at it. Okay. So seeing uh, Gizzard unconscious on the ground and this large creature here, uh, Artis is actually going to do something you guys haven't seen yet. Ooh. And all of a sudden, um, a large wall of ice starts to appear around this uh, around this crocodile and let me see exactly what the measurements he can do this in um, uh, so he can do 10 uh, yeah basically he's gonna make a spherical dome of ice appear on top of this crocodile I like it And it's, uh, that will end his turn and bring us over to Melek, who Wait, is... Did, feeling... did it work? No, it's, it literally, it just appears. Oh. There's, uh, okay. with, uh, this specific thing, it just happens. It's, it appears in the area. It's not a saving throw. And that will bring us over to Melek. And as I mentioned before, and uh, actually, Lennon, you weren't here, we're tossing this more to the group, given that Dave is not here. And Dave has said that uh, Melek is feeling the pull of said fiddle and is becoming more reckless, uh, given what I've rolled and 
for this evening. Don't want to, you know, do anything too crazy. So uh, how would Melek, how would the new reckless Melek handle this stepping out of the tent and seeing a large dome of ice with what appears to be a very infuriated, slightly smoldering <laughs> crocodile inside of it? I think you try and wrestle it. Hmm. Oh, right now it's pinned inside. Uh, Melek doesn't have direct access to it. So it's we can have uh, Melek try to destroy some of the ice to get in at it. <laughs> JJ, you're right. Huh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a valid point as well, JJ. Um, and given uh, that Melek can see the crocodile through it, uh, we've got Vicious Mockery. It's one of the few uh, things that... Do it. Make fun of the giant <laughs> crocodile. Well, let's see what we get here. So, Vicious Mockery, it's a wisdom save. And the crocodile is not feeling very wise, so it is going to take the damage and will have a disadvantage on its next attack, which will be against ice. Uh, Dragon Bait is going to step out and uh, see the giant ice thing is not going to do anything because of... I love it. Uh, we're going to go with Digitio's idea here, and there's... Uh, Melek has stepped out in here. Oh, your mother was a handbag. <laughs> Love it. Then, thank you very much, uh, Digitio, for the inspiration there. And then that brings us over to Solana, who has um, just seen Artis, who up until now you've only ever seen wield his longsword create this dome of ice over the crocodile. I go, wow, that's really cool. Literally. And then I walk over to um, the, the gizzard. <laughs> One is surprised and also intrigued at Artis's surprisingly profound magical abilities. There we go. <laughs> gizzard, you find your eyes fluttering awake as <laughs> you are now at 14 health. So that's and... um that's it. That's oh, my turn. Okay. So uh this giant croc is now going to try to break its way out of this uh whatchamacallit this prison. First attack will hit not enough to get out. Second attack. Uh, let me jump over here. That was almost max damage right there. Yeah, I just gonna make sure it's a hit. As a high, it, the second one does not hit as it tries to reach out and chimp, uh, chomp down on the ice to get through. The snout's just sliding off. The inside of it's too smooth. Gizzard, your eyes have fluttered open. You're laying down sore tooth marks all across your chest and back. And your giant lizard brethren is currently in a giant ball of ice. <laughs> Alright. Beautiful. Um, I'm very confused about this ice. I don't know what to do with it. <sighs> hmm. I'm going to hold my action. I think. Okay. Until the, the ice goes away. Uh, okay, so we've got you holding an action. You're staying where you are? Yeah, I'm still on my back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Quen, what do we, uh, what's Quen doing? So describe to me what the situation is. So there's like a dome of ice over the crocodile. Yeah, ba basically it's just a half an orb. So if you're given the size, do I have access <laughs> to its body? Can I can I poke at it with my sword or? No, it's literally it's like you took a glass bowl and set it on top of a spider. 
Oh, okay, okay. So you're pretty sure if I... you were to strike the ice hard enough, you might be able to break through it, but you don't know how much of it would break as a result of you trying to get through it. So Quen will also hold his uh, action um, for the moment, and yes, he'll hold his action. Okay. So that brings us to Devonay. Devonay, from your where you are, you can see sort of Melik and Gizzard getting ready. Uh, sorry, Quen and Gizzard getting ready. Um, what are you doing? Devonay is going to suggest running away. Okay. Quen will shout, "I will never flee from combat, not today or any day," because he's summertime right now and he won't run away I agree with Devine but no one's gonna listen to us so might as well kick it Devine alright but if they all die I'm running away <laughs> aren't you like lawful good oh no <laughs> no I'm not um, although I like the nice uh, path that you all made and I'm at the end of it there. <laughs> lawful good does not mean lawful stupid. Let's. <laughs> I mean. Okay, so. Uh, All right. Um, I'm gonna do another chromatic orb. Uh, do me a favor, real quick. Make an intelligence check for me. All right. Great idea. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> Go ahead and make your roll. <laughs> okay, go ahead and uh, roll damage. Oh my god. And what are uh, what are we doing? You're sticking with your uh, fire from last time. Yeah. Okay, and I know it's going to melt it, but something needs to happen. As you guys watch, as Devonay fires off another chromatic orb, and you see the shifting ball of energy slam into the side of this ice dome, and then burst red with fire, as you hear almost like a spider's cracking across glass, and the entire orb shatters. Can I can I do my held action now? Yep, uh, both you and Quinn had said you were holding attacks on it, so... Uh, Go ahead and uh, make your rolls. Beautiful. I'm gonna make a a blow. <laughs> yep. Uh, a, a ranged attack at melee. Did, you'd have disadvantage on it. Why would you do that? It. Yeah, it's right next to you. All right. Why not? I'll just kick it. <laughs> <laughs> on my back, just. Uh. <laughs> it it. Why don't you get up? I can't. I don't have my action. I can't move or anything. So. I, I, I was going to ask that last time, Sarah. I decided not to. So uh, go ahead and roll your attack. And then, uh, Quinn, you said you were holding your attack as well. Yes. I'm going to cast Booming Blade once again. Okay. Uh... And da -da 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 -da. Actually, for this, I will say you have advantage because you are sort of flanking with Quen, so that is going to hit. So go ahead and roll damage. Uh, Quen, yours hits without a problem, so go ahead and roll. Okay. Hey, can I, um... Actually, no. I can't do it, don't worry. What were you going to say? No stress. I just realized I needed to be able to... Actually, can I attempt to stun it? I think I can do that, yeah, when I hit it, hit it with a melee attack. Sure, can go I ahead. To stun? Cool. So it must succeed on a constitution saving throw. Oh, okay, and what's your DC? It would be... Uh, 10, uh, 8 plus 15. For some unbegotten reason, this half-dead lizard folk has managed to stun the crocodile as a result of one fairly well-placed kick. 
I kick it like in the neck and it just kind of. <laughs> so, like any bad action movie you've ever seen. <laughs> it's oh my god, the, the it's Jackie Chan. That it gobbled up earlier. And with that, uh, we come back to Artis, who's going to look around and go, but why are, why are we not trying to run? This That's what I said. Not <laughs> That's what I said, and too. And we'll yeah. shout, it's a good day as any to die. What better way to die than the thrill of combat? There's Artis Do I know up. you people? <laughs> Let's see here. He is backing away because he is not getting anywhere near that thing. And he's going to uh, take his longbow out. And one. Hits it once. Okay, and that will end Mr. Artis's turn, and that brings us to Melek at the top of the order. Uh, this thing is now exposed to the world. Uh, what would Melek do? This thing is looking like it's in uh, pretty rough shape at the moment. Does Melek have a sword? Uh, let's see here. Melek has a battle axe and a dagger. Uh, also has a couple of, uh, in terms of damaging spells, we have Vicious Mockery. We have uh, Thunder Wave, Shatter, and uh, Hellish Rebuke. Shatter? What would that hit us? Uh, let's see here. Okay, uh, all 20 is having a moment. Let me just flip through and find Shatter in my book here. Okay, Shatter. Uh, each creature within 10 feet of you, so yes. Hit anybody within 10 feet. So that would be, uh, actually just Quen and the Lizard. Oh, okay. Would Reckless Melek pay enough attention to know Quen is there? I, I think that's exactly what Reckless Melek would do. <laughs> I mean, whatever. No, doesn't doesn't harm himself, just uh, this... doing it for battle, I, I think. Yeah. Okay. Shatter it is. So, uh, then, Quen, I need you to make a uh, constitution save. save. Okay, so both Quen and uh, you are not within 10 feet. I'm right next to the. the Wait, do I have to make one? Oh, I'll be no, sorry. it's only within sorry. 10 feet. Melek's down, uh, Good. down here, and actually. I just assumed. So, uh,. When you and the crocodile both take a decent chunk of damage, but as you guys notice, as Melek yells out and lets out this blast of a shockwave, the crocodile's eyes roll black back into the head and go black as this creature collapses onto the ground. Oh, thank goodness. Ha ha ha! And by the will of Solana, Gizzard is alive. For <laughs> better or worse. Remember, you did this. <clears throat> Wait, what? I did what? You kept me alive. So whatever happens from here on out, it's your fault. So is... Uh... You guys have... 
managed to slay this massive chunk of meat. Did I want to leave him alive? You already saved his life once before. Oh, yeah. But Solana's a good, though. I am. I am chaotic good. Damn it. Okay. And it's a little late to wonder whether or not you wanted to keep Desert alive after you saved him. <laughs> yeah, he's right next to me on the ground, though. I could, like, just gently snuff him out. Well, Matt, nice TARDIS mug. Oh, thank you. Oh, you guys have, uh, managed to, uh, have a rather large crocodile corpse now, sort of, right next to your camp that you had set up for the evening. What is everyone doing at this point? Harvesting. <laughs> okay, go ahead and make me a survival check. First of all, I want to thank Solana. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. And I quote the uh, druid... I just saved your gizzard. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no. As, uh, oh, <laughs> as gizzard, as you walk over and start taking what little things you have and just realizing tools aren't going to work as well, you just start trying to rip into this thing with your hands. Uh, Salon, I'm assuming that role was to, uh, for the same thing he's trying to do. Yeah, I, I was assisting him, yeah. Oh, well, okay. If you're going to help him out, then uh, as you two start going into it, and uh, Gizzard, you think your hands are going to work best, Solana comes over and starts pointing out easier ways. As you guys start going through, I mean, this thing is literally, you know, this is 15 feet tall. I mean, this is a massive crocodile. You guys are easily going to walk out of here. You know, how much meat do you want to carry? Well, I got rid of my gnome and my, uh, raptors, so as much as I can. We do still have some Eblis jerky. That's true, that's true. So, it's, we'll say for, uh, you guys can get anywhere easily up to at least 100, 150 pounds of meat if you guys really want to carry that much. Whoa. Okay. That's too many meats. <laughs> how, should, how should we split this? <laughs> You I'll just have an alligator before. Are I have. Raw? Can I, can I snag a bunch of raw meat? Sure. It tastes like conch and it has the consistency of conch and tastes like chicken. Yes. <laughs> I've never had conch, so. It's very good. And yes, yes because these are the sort of conversations that Gizzard's habits of eating anything he can find open up to us. Yes, we're getting <laughs> getting along fine. Yeah. How much raw crocodile meat do you think I could carry? Well, again, it's your carrying capacity. So, how much cooked crocodile meat are you carrying? None, just raw. <laughs> I'll make so, some crock jerky. So okay, then we'll say, uh, given the size of it, hundred and hundred. Oh god. So, again, just keep in mind that if you're carrying it raw, it's gonna rot. <laughs> I'm fine with that. No one else is. <laughs> so, as that's going on, uh, Devin, you know, Sardis sort of had been standing a little behind you off to the side, walks up beside you and just looks over and says, Why, why, why do they not run when they should? I'm not altogether sure most of the time about most of the things they do. It's, it is no shame in an intelligent retreat in a situation like that. But it seems it was not necessary after all. So I would never to... retreat and abandon my comrades. I think we would all run together. It would only be like Gizzard flying there. <laughs> Artist just sort of looks at the group of you a little, a little strangely, but 
sort of half nods and heads he back. He thinks we're the derpy, doesn't he? Make an insight check if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> so how long went into the rest was this? <clears throat> oh, where is my note? Um, when you get a moment, remember I correctly. Like to, uh, talk to artists. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure if my notes are right here, this was the third watch, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. So am I stuck at uh, 14 hit points for the rest of the day? No. Okay. Once you finish the long rest, I consider anything that happens if it happens during the uh, during your uh, during the night, y'all still start out the next morning fresh, unless it's the last one, because at that point everyone's waking up and you're fresh at that point. Yeah. Cool. And Quan, you said you were looking to talk to an artist at some point. Uh, yes. Uh, Quinn is interested in Artis's magical capabilities. Um, oh. Can I roll Arcana to see if I recognize the spell that he casted? Sure. I rolled a 21 on Insight to see if you thought he, we rode the short bus. Oh. Uh, you don't necessarily, uh, with that roll, Solana, you don't necessarily think uh, he thinks you're all window lickers, but <laughs> he's definitely... <laughs> more interested in keep uh, keep moving doesn't like to stay in one place it no uh, it's he seems a little jumpy and things like this you know it's get away keep moving not you know in his view he set up the perfect opportunity pick up everybody book it so uh, Quinn, with that roll, you're not quite sure what the spell was, um, but uh, retrospectively, go ahead and make a perception. Okay. Yeah, and Digitio, he really is just on a tour of all the different meats he can eat in the jungle. Okay, so as you watched him cast this, you saw a f you saw a slight flash of a sort of whitish blue light emanate from a ring on his finger. Um, Quen will uh just you know um not charged up to him, but he will, he will, you know, walk very assuredly up to Artis and will say, well met friend, it was quite a spell you cast. I haven't seen that before and I know my way around a spell book. Um, can I say, uh, what exactly was that? Get a little bit of an uncomfortable gaze back. Just a wall of ice meant to aid in our retreat from the situation, but it seems some of you had other ideas in place. Uh, Quinn will, will press him a little further just because this is how he's feeling today. Um, so tell me, I noticed this quite a flashy display upon your ring finger. Might I inquire as to it? Go ahead and make a persuasion check for me. Okay, I'm not very good at persuasion. Here. Let's see. Uh, just... It sort of looks at you and uh, while this is going on in this conversation I was going what would everyone else be doing uh, we'll say Malik's heading battles over Malik's going back to bed right oh well, I guess I guess two I'm sorry Solana oh wait I already trance can I um make some jerky I'm gonna make jerky 
Okay. Gizzard, what about you? I'm gonna politely offer extra portions of the crocodile meat to Solana. <laughs> Here, take them. You deserve them. Thank you. And then, and then Devin, what about you? Oh, sorry, go ahead. JJ Moore. No, I'm just gonna settle in for the rest of the night. Just go to sleep. Oh, okay. And Devin, what would you be doing as basically Quen has run over as Artis was heading into the tent, which is over by where you're currently standing? I'm gonna listen in on the conversation and I'll stay awake because my watch is up next anyway. Oh, okay. So, it, um, Quen, as you ask that and Artis looks at you and sees uh, Devin A sort of standing off to the side a little bit. And says, well, I suppose I might as well fill you in on the whole story here. This uh, this is known as the Ring of Winter. I've spent most of my life attempting to prevent people who are currently seeking it from gaining possession of it. But as I told you, my return to Chult is focused on reuniting with my beloved Alessandra. But if people find out I, where I am or that I have this item, there are many evil forces that seek it, and my presence here could place you in grave danger. When uh, we'll, we'll solemnly acknowledge uh, Artis's concerns and we'll say to him, well, as long as you are in control of the ring and the ring is not in control of you, I don't see any other reason why you shouldn't hold on to it. I trust you with that, whatever that is, Ring of Winter. Go ahead and uh, the both of you who are listening at the moment, go ahead and make Arcana checks now that you have a name. One, two. Yep. Yeah, you and Devin. Because you are the two listening to the story right now, and now you have a name to go off of. Okay. So let me Ooh. see here. Actually, you know what? I am not going to bother with that. I think I have it in the actual book. Let's see here. Does it actually list it? Yes, it does. Okay. So with that roll, um, so uh, what you know is that the Ring of Winter is a golden band that, much like the One Ring, resizes to fit its uh, owner's finger snugly. The thin layer of frost is always coating the outside of the ring, which normal heat can't melt under any circumstance. Uh, the ring feels ice cold to the touch and initially numbs the hand that wears it, but uh, over time, the cold ceases to be felt by the uh, wearer. Uh, you know, uh, that You know that the uh, ring does uh, give the uh, wearer certain magical capabilities. That has a certain number of charges that can be used throughout the day and to used to be cast various magical uh, effects. With those rolls, you don't really know what the effects are beyond um, the wall of ice that you just witnessed. You know that there are probably others there as well. But uh, and Devine, you also, uh, with your role being a little higher, you know that myth of this item states that there are other properties that uh, the ring is supposedly said to possess, 
but only in the possession of a dark-hearted being whose will cannot be broken. Well, Quen will will recall all those myths that he heard and, you know, will be uh, very uh, assured in his dedication to artists and will bow to him and will say, well, as if it's for the purpose of keeping it away from evil, I shall help you. How do we know he is not evil? Uh, Devine is keeping her information to herself. <laughs> Sorry, laughing at the Twitch chat. Y'all are crazy. Gotta make sure, uh... Uh-oh. Um, Twitch chat, uh... Hold on. Oh, no, okay, there it goes. I had to check, um, thought somebody's saying they can't hear, um, in Twitch chat. Uh, looks like, uh, we've checked. It's still working on our end here, uh, Tulip, and Digiteo is, uh, confirming that they're able to hear, so I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, can anyone else, uh, in chat let me know if you're having any problems hearing? So is, uh, Wow. Because it wants to eat somebody. What a shock. <laughs> so is uh, Quinn and Devine, your conversation with uh, Artist sort of comes to a close and he starts. Uh... Oh, is our stream frozen? Uh, Mr. Producer, are you still here with us? Uh, no. Uh... Let's just go. Ding dong. I'm going to ding there. Okay, uh, so our producer's still here. Yep, I can see the stream is still running. Oh, obviously she can't bloody well hear us. I don't know why I keep saying this. Um, huh. Oh, uh, I'm not sure why it's uh, not running on the proper channel, Tulip, but if it's working, uh, Oh, and wow, I didn't notice that on there. Thank you very much for the cheers, uh, Tulip. So, uh, I'm not sure why it's not working there, but we're just going to keep on trucking on at the moment. So as Quinn and Devonay finish up uh, their conversation with Artis, and Artis makes his way uh, back into his tent to settle down for the remainder of the uh, evening. Gizzard and Solana take care of their harvesting, and Solana is in the process of making jerky out of um... 100 pounds of crocodile meat. <laughs> 150. Too many crocodile meat. 150 pounds. <laughs> Too many. So it's... Solana is basically not resting for the rest of the uh, rest of it, but luckily she uh, got her uh, trance in already. So, uh, Devine, anything you'd be doing during your watch? Nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. As you um, guys, since uh, since Quinn is already awake, he will want to be awake more and will um, walk around the area and just see what's up. Okay. <laughs> oh, did you know that would be true if he knew about the ring? <laughs> Desert was busy harvesting during that whole conversation. <clears throat> so as uh, you guys come to uh, finish your watch, come to conscious consciousness. Blah, I can't speak anymore. Consciousness. As you all wake up for the morning, <laughs> uh, you see uh, the sun sort of creeping up over. Uh, and we are going to jump back over to the map. If you can follow along, Mr. Producer Man, we'll jump over. And you have the sun starting to creep over the uh, canopy, shedding light into the, uh, say, the outskirts of the uh, swamp as you're heading in towards the jungle. Toward, uh, I've, got a, I've got a quick question. Um, sure. 
I remember Malik had something to give me, but since Dave isn't here, should we do that or no? Oh. Yes, uh, we'll do that. I know Malik was a little concerned over the uh, giant, uh, I think it was a giant crocodile or something else going on. And we can <laughs> retcon it after the fact if uh, Malik had an Nintendo, but it did say it was intended for you. So as you guys all wake up in the morning, Gizzard comes to consciousness and uh, popping, uh, you know, popping snacks of raw crocodile meat. <laughs> As Solana has uh, spent the last couple of hours, you know, cooking and cooking away to make jerky out of that, um, whatchamacallit, out of that crocodile meat, you do manage to succeed in making uh, 150 pounds of croc jerky. <laughs> so you guys have uh, enough dried meat to Lord only knows what, but... uh. As uh, Malik comes over to you, Gizzard, and says, huh. "Well, hey, this is a uh, this is from that bag we found the other uh, the other day, and uh, I feel it would do you much more good than it would ever do me." And with that, uh, well, I'll throw it up here to show to everyone, but it is now available in your journal, Mister Gizzard. Is oh, the Green leather mask known as trust. Oh god. <laughs> oh, do I have that dagger in my in my it's, if you look at your journal, you will see the sheet. Wait, yeah. I want to see what the mask looks like. How uh, it? Did it not work when I click show to players? It it's it showing me. <laughs> oh, okay, you know what? Fine. Uh you know what? we will just go remove. And we will just put these in all players so you all can see what each other, uh, at least with these items. Okay. Show to players. Oh, God. That is the mask. I love it. Dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's ferocious. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, uh, you got the nat 20, so you didn't get inspiration from last week, but you now have inspiration because that is an incredible visual. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There is the fiddle of the mad god. Whoa, look at that essay. Yeah, that one's a little nuts. Big props and, to uh, many sided dice for providing. Yeah, all of, all of these items that I'm now showing to our players are all out of the lost artifacts of Greygast. And thank you very much for uh, joining, Tulip. You have yourself a wonderful evening and uh, enjoy the homework. And I'm going to pop into chat and do lost artifacts and hope this works. As you know, some days my little thing, hey, perfect, it pops right up. And then our last one is the sword breaker dagger. Oh, wow. Again, as JJ said, thank you very much to uh, Many Sided Dice for uh, this wonderful book that there you may see some more of their items making uh, appearances in this here adventure. Nice. Quinn might ask help with uh, training with this a dagger for attunement because I don't think he did that last time. No, it's, and that actually I meant to mention that before we jump, but it's better to do it on stream where they saw where everyone saw it when they were being issued out. Uh, so the attunement for the many sided, uh, for many sided dice, lost artifacts, and gray gas. Well, the attunement requirements for these items are a little sideways. It's not like a normal magical item. I didn't read full uh, well enough into them. So like uh, all the mask requires for attunement is you put it on and poof, you're attuned. As long as you leave it on, the minute you take it off, you lose that item forever. Uh, the sword breaker dagger, as you notice, it requires a little bit of training, and then the fiddle requires going, you know, hog heavy and you know, a little bit reckless. So uh, we've got some other uh, items set up that uh, you guys may be seeing in the near future. But as your morning has come to, you guys have snacked on a freshly cooked crock. Saving your supplies that you have, or in Gizzard's case, freshly, you know, bitten off the bone crock. 
uh, who is taking your navigational lead for today's journey? I think Solana can, can do it. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> okay, Solana, go ahead and give me a survival. Yay, Ooh. I know where we're going. Yes, Solana <laughs> knows exactly where we're going today. And uh, what sort of pace are you uh, setting? A normal for the pace. No Oh, okay, so you guys managed to uh, wrap your canoes. Uh oh, did uh, we lose Devonay? I'm oh. still here, just roll uh, 20. Roll 20 for us up? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so as, uh, as Devonay's working to rejoin us, we'll uh, start getting this moon. So as uh, you guys get everything situated up, we've got. Solana getting uh, everyone ready to uh, move out for the day. She seems to know exactly where you guys are heading out. Then, let's see here. Let's see how the day's travel goes. Okay. So you guys uh, pile up into the canoes again, start heading off down towards Ataz Kahakla, and actually I have to uh, clear off some spots from where you were. Oh, wait, stop moving. Okay. There. Okay. So as you guys proceed, uh, make your way through. Uh, do me a favor, as Solana, you are the one navigating. Roll a d20 for me. Okay. Uh, I can't Thank do you very much. And then, let's see. And then roll a d19 for me. Alrighty then. Perfect. Thank you very much. So as uh, you guys are making your way along the, uh, ooh, whatchamacallit, along your path in the canoe, just again, sort of uh, rowing down. Um, as Solana's pointing out at different points, you guys are, still hasn't rained much recently. So you guys are watching, seeing if you could, keeping your eyes out for any supplies or anything, trying to avoid having to boil more water when you make camp at the end of the uh, day. Um, Gross. As you guys are traveling, uh, Devonay, Quen, Gizzard, anything you guys would be doing throughout the day? Um, Quen will insist to all of the martial uh, heroes to spar with him and practice and really get a good grip on the Swordbreaker dagger. All right, well, I'll, I'll assist in that. Okay. I won't be using weapons, but... <laughs> and then, uh, Devonay, what would you be doing? And we can say, uh, for you take um, about with that as well. Yeah, I'll help uh, Quen, but I wouldn't be using either of my swords. I'd probably take a branch. Okay. So, uh, so, so. Okay, as you guys are making your way uh, along the path, heading over, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, Solana, you notice it first. A rather large shadow slowly gliding overhead, heading sort of uh, southwest from where you are currently. Okay, I um get nervous because we just fought a very large crocodile. And I go, oh my god, guys, look at that. Um, you should probably be quiet or something and uh, ooh, hide and um, can I, can I cast past without a trace in a canoe? 
Yeah, if you want to do. It's right now all you've seen is a shadow drifting. Literally, you saw a shadow pass over you. I don't sure think it's, it's a dirigible. Dirigible. It, it's something flying. That's a good time. Um, do you guys want to stealth through this, or do you feel comfortable with stuff? Why are we scared of a shadow? I don't listen to you anymore. It's what hey, creates the shadow is the problem. <laughs> but yeah, if you have something that can help us avoid a, another fight, that'd be great, Solana. Okay. Quinn wants to get a better look at whatever that shadow was. Okay, go ahead and roll a uh, perception check for me. And I want to roll two, please. Oh, okay, all fire away. Yeah, anyone who wants to can go ahead and take a roll. Bah, Quinn, uh, Quinn, it's mighty bright. As you look up, that shadow moves and you just get a face full of sunlight. Uh, ah. Okay, Solana. Uh, anyone else joining in or no? Nope. Okay. Uh, Devine, you're really not sure. It's way up there in the... It's about an hour before noontime, so the sun's pretty much straight up. Solana, as you're looking up, you have no problem seeing a large red leathered body flying above you, heading slightly southwest. Okay. Large, leathery, red body. What do you guys think about that? Can we keep moving? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're stealth and we keep moving not okay. in that way. So go ahead, uh, everyone give me stealth checks. And Digitio, it is not, it's not an odd cloud. It is an aggressive cloud. Ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> Isn't it a bit difficult to spell from the Any, Anyway, any, I'll, anyway I'll, I'll, do I'll do it. I'll do it. Well, the, for the most part, the uh, jungle is fairly over, uh, I'm guessing, wow. Yeah, you and then are, add 10 to all that. Add 10 to everything. So you guys are easily able to slow down your pace a little bit. Uh, so you're traveling a little slower than you were before, but uh, you managed to think you're doing a pretty good job. A couple of hours goes by. The uh, red dragon that Solana had just seen flying above you seems to be a thing of somewhat distant memory. Oh, thank goodness gracious. Too much tea? No, I'm hiccuping. Um, are you guys going to continue to stealth for the rest of the day, or now that are you guys comfortable after a couple of hours? What's the group's opinion on how to handle the travel? Because stealthy or moving slower, you can do it. Well, it's I'm, just gonna... I'm very comfortable not stealthy. <laughs> Says okay. The one if one of the party doesn't points. stealth, then the whole party <laughs> doesn't really have to stealth, I guess. Right. Well, given you're all in canoes, it's a little difficult for it to be one or not. I mean, Gizzard could be sitting there with a metal can just going, bang, 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 bang! <laughs> this is true. <laughs> but there's no way for him to speed up, so if he's just sitting there and you guys are still going at the slow speed... We I mean, could knock him else, out, too. Well, it's everyone else rolled a 30, even if he crit failed, your average would still put you... Without him deliberately causing a nuisance, it would be hard to fail at. <laughs> um, I don't mind stealthing for the rest of the day, but it would be uh, a lot slower. But we could do it or we couldn't. We could go regular pace. I don't know. I don't like decisions. This is why I don't navigate. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, Devin a, make a decision. <laughs> make a decision. Well, things in the air move a lot faster than things on the ground. I think we should stay stealth. Okay. I agree. Just because you said that. 
Yeah, so you guys manage to uh, continue the rest of the day. Lunch goes through. Uh, you don't notice anything else on the uh, anything else really jumping out in the area to you. Gets to be about uh, suns just after sunset. It's starting to get a little darker. You guys start considering to make camp, and as you uh, pass along in this area. And actually, uh, do me a favor, Slana. Roll a D2. So where you have stealth, you're a little slower than where I'd normally put you. So you got to decide whether or not you're more north or south. So as you guys have made your way about another like 10, 12 miles along the path, as you start looking for a spot to make camp, you notice that there's a path into the trees in front of you. Looks to be... Is it man-made? Uh, go ahead and make a... We'll call it a nature check. Okay, let me see here. Okay. Oh, what did we lose? We lost a JJ. Oh, no. Hopefully we'll have JJ back in a moment. Um, so with that check, let's see here. Uh, as you're looking at it, uh, it's not a carved path. Okay. It's definitely something went through here, and it's large. Oh. You're seeing trees are knocked over. I mean, it's literally something just walked into a wall of forest and just trees started parting for it. Oh, well, something really big passed by here. Can uh, I'm not a I'm not a ranger. I can't tell what it went by. Let's see. So, okay, would would Quen have noticed this? Oh, yeah, no, oh, it's yeah, like, no, it's, it's like the audience. It's, it's about a good. Probably, probably 25, 5 foot wide. wide. Oh, it's only 5 foot wide? It's no, not like, like 25 to 30 feet. Oh, 25 to 30. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Quen would recognize it as a wall of force, I guess, just right away. No, it's not. It's literally like it's, if you walked up to the out, if you walked up to the outside of a forest and there are trees, and then on your side of it, it's just like the open swampy area you've been in. It looks like something walked through the swamp into the trees, and the trees just parted. Wow. Sounds there are like trees a... laying on the ground. It's something large walked through here. Hmm. If only we had someone who was good at nature things to figure out what's going on here. I did. I, I said it wasn't a man made path. What more do you want from me? <laughs> I think mm. the well, new question is. New question is. Are we going to stick right. around? Well, with the 23, Matt, do I know, like, um, how long ago it was that it was made or anything, or? It's... Go ahead and make a survival check for me. With that roll, given the nature, I'll say make it with advantage. Okay, good. Okay, so as you're going around and you're looking through... Uh, you don't really see any tracks or anything because you're still technically in the swampy area. So anything you're sort of standing on is a little mushy. Anything, even your own tracks as you step, the water's sort of filling in around it. Uh, as you're looking at the trees and stuff, though, you can see that it's not a fresh break. The Given your nature as a druid, you can tell the, the trees that have been knocked down there starting to die a little bit. It's been a few days since they've been knocked down. You're pretty confident that whatever went through the swamp into the into these trees is at least a couple of days ahead of you. Okay, well this thing is 
ahead of us a couple days so we can stay here if you want or we can move a little further in whatever you guys want again with the decision making if you are concerned about perhaps being stealthy um we should move in a little bit more okay actually, actually that's uh real quick out of it uh jj how much did you hear before you get dropped no to nothing <laughs> Okay, basically, as you guys pulled over to start making camp, as you guys looking for a nice spot, you guys came across a section as you're still technically in the swampy area coming up towards a really, the much thicker part of the jungle, and found just a section of the forest that basically the wall of trees that makes the denser part of the forest, with about a 25 or a 30 foot section of it that looks like something just plowed through the trees, knocking things over, clearing a wide berth through. All right, my statement stands. <laughs> if the thing is ahead of us, I don't want to be moving closer to it. We should not expose ourselves out in the open. We hide in the brush, amongst the trees. We're just safer that way. Just, just a little ways in. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, let's do that. Yay! Okay, so... You guys move into the about 30, 40 feet into the uh, in from where you are in the uh, into the heavily wooded area, just a little off of that large path that heads uh, slightly uh, north of where you guys were at the moment, and proceed to get camp situated for the evening, uh, enjoying another lovely snack of crocodile that can't be beat, even though you might start. To be getting a little sick of it. And how are you guys handling watches for this evening? I'll take first. Devin A will take last. I'll take the night. And we'll take second. I'm asleep. So, okay, so Malik's take take second. Uh, apparently, Malik's going to take third. So, uh, okay, I need perception checks from three of you. I'll go ahead and make one for Malik. Why? My music stopped for some strange reason. I don't know why I just now noticed that. I blame JJ. <laughs> you broke it. Okay. Wait, so, oh, okay. We've got a, uh, I need a uh, roll from Devon A and Quen for me. Oh, okay. Another one might appear. I'm not sure if I clicked it twice. Eh, no worries. Okay. So is, uh, You guys start getting everything uh, situated for camp. Uh, again, artists and uh, Dragon Maid helping get everything set up. Solana, you start taking and getting the uh, getting uh, what you want, uh, getting your watch set up. Is there anything in specific you'd be uh, wanting to work on during your watch? Um, I'm gonna circle the camp and look for sticks. For bolts and um, darts. Okay. So, as your. Uh... Go ahead and make a uh, survival check for me. Oh, yeah, you have. Uh... No issues whatsoever finding. Uh... You manage to easily find another. We'll say 15, because you're now in a slightly more uh, heavily forested area than you were a few moments ago. And as you're, uh, as you're sort of walking around, taking care of everything, you hear a strange noise off in the distance. Uh, nature? Perception? Can I hear it better? 
Oh. That that sounds like like something like a dog <laughs> thing. Uh, go ahead and make a uh, nature check for me. As apparently, uh, Gizzard has already decided what sort of meat it is he's going to eat next. <laughs> <laughs> what he's gonna eat next, yeah. <laughs> Okay, and, uh, come on. With that check, uh, you're a little surprised as you didn't think there were any in the, uh, typically in the jungle, but you're pretty sure that that was a wolf. It sounded like it was a decent, uh, fairly decent distance away from you, though. Okay, I won't. I'll pass the information along. But I won't r worry about it right now, because I can't really do anything. But, yeah. Okay. So, rest of your uh, watches, you manage to collect your uh, 15 stakes, passes without a problem. Uh, comes time for you to uh, get uh, Quinn for uh, his watch. Quinn! Quinn uh, blinks his eyes open. Quinn. His, his eyes flash. Quinn. Quinn. His, hello. And his eyes open and flicker and, and flash a little uh, brown orange. And he says, Oh, Solana, my best friend. How are you? How is your watch? It was great. I heard wolves. Okay, good night. That's awful. But I'm yeah. so glad. Wow. Jeez. Okay. Um, hmm. Do you have anything to drink? I'm so ooh, parched. Where's that alchemy? Drink? I can boil you some more. Or you can steal the jug. Uh, I'll, I, won't, I don't want to wait, Gizzard. Um, okay, I'll okay. boil water first. No, for, that's okay. Um, I got it. <laughs> um, Quen will will stand up and will and will uh, get up and he says, "God, I'm so hungry too." Uh, I'll make you a good berry. I'll make you a good berry. Oh, I make him a yes, good berry. a good berry. <laughs> Seems Quen is not feeling the uh, crocodile jerky. <laughs> oh, there is cro ah. Uh. Uh, so, somehow he so. just remembers that there's crocodile jerky and a lot of it. Oh, we have all sorts of show names for Gizzard's show. Uh, Digitio's cho uh, chomping in with uh, Chewing Through Chult with Gizzard and Co. <laughs> <laughs> Gizzard Gulp's Great Grub, a food adventure. <laughs> Good Eats with Gizzard. <laughs> oh my god. So is, uh, okay, so is, uh... so Quen will will grab some some snackage, and a good berry for good measure, and will continue on his watch, just kind of just just kind of snacking around and looking at all the things, and you know, kind of being aware of werewolves. So is uh, you guys uh, you go through your watch again waiting and listening and much like uh the Solana mentioned to you after probably about 35 45 minutes off in the distance you hear the same matching call hmm friends a little huh Kind of a little worried. Um, he'll so okay. Um, maybe you can role play this out for me, Matt. But uh, I want um, Chi Chi to kind of um, see if Chi Chi can kind of uh, commune and, and commune with the plants and the other little um, chewingas in the area to see what might be around. Okay. Um... Go ahead and roll a uh, d20 for me and add three. 
We're gonna see because I I've got to fix Chi Chi's shoe because I've got Chi Chi set up finally. Okay. Oh, you forgot the slash. Okay. So uh, as you're talking with Chi Chi a little bit and. Uh, Again, that strange sort of expressionless face that uh, the Chewingas are known for. You see it sort of almost like light up a little bit and nod and with a little leap, uh, Chi Chi takes off off your shoulder and sort of disappears into the brush for a little while. A uh, good hour, hour and a half goes by as you're going through your watch and, you know, trying to pay attention, but at the same point, getting a little worried that Chi-Chi's been gone so long. As, uh... As, uh... <laughs> eventually, as you're eventually looking, as you're looking you see the small, tiny figure of your familiar sort of popping through and, uh, comes running back up and pops back up onto, uh, Quen's shoulder. And as the two of you are communicating uh, Chi Chi starts giving you flashes of what appear to be very large white wolves two of them so when you say flashes you mean like I'm getting visions of these or almost uh, when you're communicating with Chi Chi it's a, tele it's a telepathic communication with your familiar so you're getting uh, the best way i can describe it is like images of this uh what chi chi was able to figure out is from the plants and communing and looking into it that basically large white four-legged creatures walked by and oh this thing says looks sort of like this you know it's like doing a police sketch from 10 different people and is chi chi came back and gives you a flash of what was described if describes the right word you get what looks to be a somewhat overly exaggerated image of a wolf it's four legs large white but the snout in, again in the artist's rendition the snout's a little longer the teeth are a little bigger it's like a bad cartoon, yeah, cartoon. <laughs> yeah sure I got it okay 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 um hmm Thank you, Chi Chi. You were gone for so long. I was worried about you. I was so scared. Oh, here. Um, I I break off just the tiniest little piece of jerky and I put it in my palm and I hand it to him just to see if he takes it or not. Uh, let's uh, let's find out. Roll a D two. Up, Chi Chi has to you know fix it or nibbles at a little bit. Let doesn't look like overly interested but is you're not really sure if it's you know being polite or you know maybe trying to get a taste for it <laughs> you're a strange little fellow Chi Chi but I guess that's why we get along give him a good berry he'll like that oh right oh here's a good berry <laughs> from my pocket that I just inexplicably remembered that I had <laughs> I was saving it for last but for my good little forest sprite, my favorite little forest sprite, here you go. <laughs> and that, I don't even need to roll for that, that just vanishes. <laughs> so you, oh. definitely, you, you definitely, definitely get the impression that uh, more herbivore than carnivore <laughs> for little Chi Chi. <laughs> ah, good. Well, now I know what to get you for your birthday, if you have a birthday. I'll throw a party for you anyways. Oh, yes. Oh, I bet you'd love a party, Chi Chi. Can I make flowers bloom everywhere with Runecraft? Because that'd be awesome. Oh, make do. a perception check. Let's see, because this is right after your watch, so you would have been a little ways away. We'll see if you'd even notice uh, at this point, because it's been a little while. Me? Yep. What am I doing? Uh, go ahead and make a perception check. See if you notice oh. that uh, Quen had sent off Chi Chi before you uh, started trancing. No, I don't know anything. No, you, yeah. So, no flowers <laughs> at the moment. You walked. 
Oh, they're wolves! Oh. <laughs> right into the triads. <laughs> so Final uh, handle it. <laughs> so as you guys start getting everything ready, uh, Quentin, the rest of your watch passes, no other issues. You hear a couple more times throughout your watch, the wolves, but listening to them, it sounds like they're not coming any closer. You're not quite sure if they're moving further away or if they're like moving uh, parallel to where you guys are, but you're fairly certain they're not approaching. Comes time to uh, wake uh, Malik for uh, his watch. Anything in specific you'd be warning Malik of or... Um, so Quen will walk to where Melik is and will um, sit beside him just a minute, you know, and, you know, kind of like just close enough just to feel his warmth and we'll just kind of like hug him and like hug him awake and we'll say, Melik, wake up. It's time for your watch. <sighs> Melik will grumble a little bit. Fine, fine, fine. Yes, I have it. Go ahead and rest. Wait, Malik, you're so warm. Can I give you another hug? Uh, oh, why not? Certainly, just make it quick. <laughs> wow, I've never hugged a tiefling before. This is so wild. Okay, well, that's enough. I'm going to bed. Night, night. Okay. So as, uh... As uh, Malik starts to take over, uh, take over for his watch, we will actually take our halfway break there. I didn't realize uh, what time we were getting to. And uh, I can use a drink and uh, break myself. So uh, thank you very much for everyone hanging out with us today. Uh, thank you again to uh, Many Sided Dice and Nightshade Creations. And uh, Mr. Producer, will you toss us on over to commercial? We will be back in just a few moments.
And welcome back, everyone. Uh, just a short break so we can grab drinks and all that fun stuff. Uh, picking up where uh, we were is Malik has just started up uh, his watch and they're uh, being passed along some information from Quen and getting a nice, uh, nice, giving a nice warm hug. <laughs> and as our group has apparently 52 reasons why Gizzard should not be left alone with large lizards anymore. <laughs> um, Malik uh, takes care of his watch. Uh, again, being warned, as everyone has been, about the wolves. Doesn't hear them getting any closer, but much like everyone else, has heard them a couple of times. Watch comes to a uh, close and proceeds to uh, wake Devonay up and passing along the same information about the uh, roaming wolves that they're hearing in the background and then heads back off to uh, finish getting some rest anything in specific that you'd be doing Devonay during your I keep a special ear out for the wolves but everything else would be as normal okay so as uh, as you're keeping an ear out, uh, you notice a slightly different sound as you hear one lone bay that comes out. It's but you don't hear anything answering back, and you remember being told by Malik that they've been hearing a couple of them back and forth. Uh, you hear that one sound, and over the period of the next hour, hour and a half, you don't hear anything else. I'll take note of the fact, but I won't do anything out of the ordinary. Okay. So as you're... Uh... It's getting to, uh, sun's starting to creep up over the, uh, over the basin, and you notice your, uh, fellow travelers are starting to come to consciousness, and, uh, pretend, uh, pretending to, starting to, uh, boil water for the day's journey, uh, Get everything situated. I actually forgot to make my roll. Okay, and actually. Okay. So, as uh, we're going to backtrack that statement a little bit, because as you guys are starting, as people are starting to wake up, there's a uh, rather heavy black clouds moving in from the basin as the sun is creeping up and is almost immediately obscured by heavy clouds and rain starting to come down. Yay, rain! No river water! Woo! <laughs> so as, uh... Okay... So as you guys start to prepare your uh, prepare yourself for the day's travel, as you're picking up uh, get situated, who is taking on the tasks of your navigation? Gizzard! Give it a shot. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Gizzard has been assigned navigational duties by... Solana for the day, so. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be good. Gizzard. Gizzard, can I see your alchemy jug? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you say this, yes, to, me you say this to me while I'm navigating. <laughs> well, uh, but before you start navigating. <laughs> no, yeah, go for it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thanks, Gizzard. Solana! Solana, Solana. What are you in the mood for today? Mead. Mead? That sounds great. 
Okay, I said V8, but meat is okay, Joe. Oh. Oh. Okay, yeah, meat. Meat it is. Meat it is. Alright, uh, Gizzard, so with the rain, uh, what sort of, uh, what pace are you setting for your group? Uh, hmm. Probably a slow pace. Look, I'm not too keen on getting to this this thing, so I'm not, oh, okay. <laughs> not in a hurry to get there. Let's see here. Uh, do me a favor, roll a d20 for me. Okay. Okay. So... So you guys pack up the canoe, get ready to uh, make your way out, and Gizzard gets you back onto the river and start moving along. Let's see here. Let's see. So as you guys are traveling through here, let's see what we, uh... uh what is everyone doing during the day's journey? We've got, uh, Gizzard Nap. Uh, Quen is, is, uh, just taking his time. We're going at a slow pace, so he's kind of, you know, hanging out towards the back. Maybe Solana's is there, maybe she isn't, and is just kind of, you know, drinking some mead and singing some songs and having a few jokes and is trying to live his best life right now. Okay. Malik would definitely be back there at the party boat you. This is true. Yes, <laughs> definitely. So is, uh, you got the two of you, uh, Solana, would you be back there as well? No, I want to look for herbs. Like, if we're going at a slow pace, could I look at the riverside? Like, oh, the definitely. river ranks? Definitely, yeah. Uh, go ahead. For and my make herbalism it. kit that I never use. Yeah, let's go ahead and either do perception or nature, whichever you... Or, uh, sorry, perception or survival, whichever you prefer. And while you're rolling that, uh, Devon A, what would you be doing? Devon A is going to be keeping an extra close eye on either side of the banks. Um... Just, just in case she spots perhaps what happened to the wolf. Oh, okay. And then, uh, okay, Solana, with that roll, roll 2d6 for me. Ooh, what's it gonna be? Okay. Uh, roll 1d6. Well, at least I'm consistent. Fives. Again? <laughs> <laughs> if you roll a third five, we're having somebody else do it for you. <laughs> oh, sorry, a fourth five is what I mean. Oh my yep. god. Yep. <laughs> it's rain. Rain and dice. Rain and dice. No, rain okay. And dice. okay. Yep, this is... <laughs> Hacks all the way. <laughs> oh, okay. Solana, who would you like to have roll for you? <laughs> Gizzard can roll for me. Gizzard, roll a d6 for me. Oh, at least one's going to be low. Okay, in the meantime, the first one is going to be... Really? <laughs> okay. So, Solana in a... Uh... Okay, three... Oh. Okay. Then... As you're searching around, you manage to find uh, some, well, one very familiar item as you see another Wuka tree, complete with five nuts on the tree. Which you, Which remember, you these remember these and nuts, these and you nuts, have you quite have a thing, quite for, these thing for these nuts. How does Malik re- oh, has Malik seen these nuts? Is no, he going to be Malik is traumatized Malik. by them? Melek is back having a good time with you, and with that, you'd need a pretty high roll to find something like these. 
And then the uh, second thing you note, uh, you locate besides those uh, knots, is you find uh, two Ryeth roots. I can't remember. I think you guys have run into these before. I can't remember who found them though. Riot, like incite a riot. Uh, no, Ryath. Uh, oh. There you go. R Y A T H. And you found two of those. I never knew what the nuts did. I, like, never nature checked them. I just started putting them in stuff. <laughs> uh, this is a valid point. Uh, if you want, go ahead and make a nature roll. See what, see what, if anything, you know about them. Nope, nothing. Nope. Can I ask what the riot ones do, or should I do a nature on that one? Uh, you'd have to do a nature check on it. Okay, maybe a little okay, bit on that. Do. Uh, as you're checking on, let's see here, uh, actually doesn't say. Uh, it's, actually, you don't know much about them. You know, if you eat, uh, if you eat more than one of them, though, uh, it's not good. But beyond that, you're not sure. As for the nuts, you have no idea. Only thing you know is, uh, no, actually, let me look at them again because I know you used one of them at one point. I'm just trying to. Remember. I used a couple. I just started dropping them on the ground, putting them in water. Yeah. I know they glowed. Okay. Yeah, that's the only thing you remember is uh, the last time when you had one and you sort of chucked it into the water up at the heart of Uptau. Uh, you heard it rattle around a little bit and then it started to glow in the water. Okay, cool. Thanks. You cracked one open uh, yeah. when you put it into the uh, sangria, and when you cracked it open, it didn't glow. Oh, and right, right, right. very mad. <laughs> <laughs> so as uh, you guys are traveling along through the day, and uh, again, Malik and Quinn are lost in their own world enjoying themselves, jokes and mead, and it's just having a good time at the back of the party boat. Uh, Devonay, you start noticing a slow moving sort of wall of blue mist starting to drift towards you from probably about 30, 40 feet ahead of you on the river. As you glance, you can see it's covering back into the trees on either side. Can I make an arcana check? Uh, this would be a nature check, actually. Uh, no, actually, let me, uh, hold on, let me double check here. Pretty sure it's nature, but. Oh, I like that one too. Let's see. Um, uh, okay, so yeah, this is not. Uh, this is not. Well, actually, you know, go ahead and make it an arcana. It does say it could qualify as a magical effect, so. You can do Arcana or Nature, whichever you choose. Uh, I'm currently the same in both, so I'll do an ar Arcana. Oh, okay. Ooh, well. pretty. <laughs> it's misty because it's rainy. Alright, I know it's different though, so I'll, I'll keep an eye on it, or, you know, nudge. Just, how, how far away is the mist? Oh, from? I see it! I see it! It's... Because it's blue, and I like the blue. 20 or 15 feet in front of you. And orange and green. Close. It's creeping towards you and you're moving towards it in the canoe. <laughs> Solana, what do you think that is? No idea. 
Uh, oh, I could use my nat 20. Who wants me to use my nat 20 to figure out what this thing is? That's I crazy do. Silly <laughs> what do you think, Daphne? If it's up to you. I want to know at, if it's something dangerous. At, at but this at the same point, time, you're... I don't want to burn it. Oh, okay, we're, we're there. At, okay. At this point, you're in it now. It's... No, never mind. <laughs> If your navigator's not slow and you're now in. So yeah, it's already slow already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not that slow though, JJ. <laughs> so as uh you guys end up slowly drifting into this deep sort of blue heavy fog mist. I need everyone in the uh, everyone he in here to make a constitution save for me. Oh no! What the hell have you built for us this time, Matt? <laughs> oh, I fell. Oh, uh, constitution nice save. Yep, constitution save. Okay. Oop. Okay. So. This is really okay. Second, so we got to uh, for artisan dragon bait because they're with you as well. Okay. Okay. Wow. This is just wonderful rolling. Okay. So, give me a second, jotting notes. Now I might use my nat 20. Depending on the oh whole what is it thing. Okay. And, okay. So, as you guys are traveling through. You notice it's just a very sort of heavy, oppressive feel at the moment. You guys are, uh, continue to make your way through. After about 25, 30 minutes, you manage to make your way through the, uh, fog bank and out to the other side. Check your throat for leeches, because that's what happened last time. I did something stupid. Don't drink the water. <laughs> well, that was like a mist, which is a form of water. So, uh, as you guys are moving along here, actually, give me a second. Okay. Gets to be about... Two hours after you guys uh, have passed through that fog bank. And I need Quen, uh, Devane, Solana, and then Melik and the other two. I need you to roll a D100 for me. It's literally everyone but me. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's literally the entire canoe except for you. Okay, so we are gonna roll Malik first. Okay, so we have Quinn is a 33, Malik is a 16, Devon A is a 98. Wow, overachiever. Solana is a 39. Artis is a 17. And Dragon Bait is a 55. Okay. And then, uh. Okay. Um, I don't know if I can do it this way, but we're gonna try. Oh, okay, that's not bad. So, 
Uh, let's see, we'll go right down the list. Quinn, we'll start with you. Okay. So, Quinn, for the next two days, you regard all mist or fog-like appearance with an intense revulsion. Actually, actually, this actually, is a terrible so, actually, vacation. So, Solana, you're in the same boat. So you two ended up with with uh, some enough rolls. They both hit you the same way. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Devin A, you immediately fall unconscious. <laughs> All right then, I'm out. No, I'm unconscious, like death save unconscious. No, I as passed out asleep. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, now look at artists. I think are gonna have. They, yeah, they've got the same thing. Okay. <laughs> Melican artists for the next two days to be blunt are tripping balls. Oh, great. <laughs> and it's like jealous. Vivid hallucinations and they, no, this is like bad trip. This is they have disability on all ability checks. <laughs> and then uh, dragon bait is going to a <laughs> yes Digitio this is the worst magic item table you've ever seen and uh, let's see there are okay there's seven in total so we're going to uh, do me a favor Gizzard where you're the only one saying roll a d6 for me can do okay one two three four five is Gizzard and you're six Okay. Uh, Dragon now appears to be almost infatuated with Malak. Dragon bait is? Yep. Yep. Quinn's jealous. I'll ship that. <laughs> would have been fun funnier if it was Devaney, because she's unconscious. <laughs> that would have been hysterical. Yeah. I was sort of hoping for that because I thought it would have been a riot, but... <laughs> Can we wake up Devaney? Uh, you're more than welcome to try. Oh, um... I, I yell in her ear and I pelt her with good berries. There's, you're yelling at her, you're throwing things, you shake her around doesn't seem to uh, be having any effect. I put a good berry in her mouth and make her masticate it. <laughs> uh, Excuse okay. me? All right. Masticate. It, there's, there's one letter I difference. Know, I don't know what that means. This is, <laughs> it means chew. <laughs> let's get this uh, let's straight. See. Chew. <laughs> I do not know enough about good berries, so we're going to take a look and see what that does. Okay, yeah, so as you, uh, cast good berries and shove it in, uh, you know, do the old Popeye, force him to chew the spinach move. Uh, goes down the throat hole, but Devonay is still unconscious. Oh, noes. At least I won't starve to death. Gizzard, <laughs> yes, do something. I'm navigating. What do you want me to do? <sighs> Keep navigating. <laughs> okay. So as you guys can continue on the way uh, throughout the day, um, again, as you keep checking on, uh, so as you check on Devonay, you know, Devonay's still breathing, everything's moving, you know, seems like she's fine just taking a nap, but no amount of uh, jostling or anything was... Uh, uh, seems to wake her.
And the other two are tripping balls. Okay. Um, uh, are they uh, safe at yeah. least? Malik and Arth, yeah, they're sitting there. I mean, it's literally... They're just sort of sitting down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why is she so tired? Well... It's, yeah, it's a little funny. So it was, uh... You guys continue, uh... Continue along through the day's travel. Comes to the, uh... Comes to the end of the, uh... Day, you guys pull over to set up camp for the night. Taking your rain catchers down, uh... Getting the tent set up. Uh, realistically, it's... Only really... Quen, Solana... Um, Dragon doesn't seem to be willing to move far from Melek's side, and Melek's not much use because, you know, tripping, and Devonay's asleep, so it's really only the three of you uh, really going through and pitching these uh, tents and getting everything set up for everyone for the evening. Uh, when will get, like, some, like, lovely blankets and pillows and just kind of pile all the all the sick folk in one little room just to make sure they're all together and taken care of. The safe room. Like, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And he's gonna, like, kind of, like, mom them a little yeah, bit. Baby yeah, baby them. Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna be the, uh, the, 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 the trip babysitter, I guess. <laughs> okay. And let's see here. I'm just. I'll have the Devonese portion of dinner tonight. What? Okay. Just looking at something real quick on Malik here. I didn't um, hear what you said, Gizzard. Can you say that again? I will have Devonese portion of dinner tonight. Okay. That's nice of you. <laughs> helping out. Do you want a good berry? No, yeah. it's not meat. Never mind. Okay, so as you guys are getting situated, uh, what's everyone doing is you're setting up camp for the afternoon. Uh, I'll start cooking for those that can eat. Oh, okay. Okay. Fun will we'll, we'll pat the, the sick people on their heads and backs and be like, they're there. It's okay. Here, drink some water. It's okay. Okay, so uh, you notice uh, Artis and Malik are still just sort of chuckling. Uh, seem to be well within the throes of their uh, little hallucinations there. Hey, give them a tinfoil ball. They'll, like, love it forever. It's amazing. <laughs> Please no one ask our druid how she does that. <laughs> Nature has mushrooms, I'm just saying. Yeah, no. No. Okay. Never mind. So is, uh, and yes, I agree, uh, Gizzard, that may very well be the name of this episode. Um, <laughs> so as you guys get everything set up, and again, Malik and Artists, you see, were, for the most part, they're okay. They're not 100% there. They're hallucinating. They seem to be stoned, but they can hear you. They can understand what you're saying. They're just, you know, Forget three sheets to the wind, they're nine sheets to the wind. Um, as you watch Dragon, Dragon seems to be fine, other than the part that won't go more than like 15, 20 feet away from uh, Malak if he can help it. The only one who really seems to be in any, uh, don't want to say danger, but who is, you really can't tell anything at the moment, is Devonay, who is just. So uh, we should do like a check on her. Do you have Arcana, Quen? Um, I don't know. Let me look at my wizard uh, character sheet. I hope so. 
<laughs> I sure hope so. Um, uh, there we go. <laughs> hey, your guess is as good as mine, obviously. This doesn't seem to be a, a magical, uh, a magical effect that you can tell, uh, Quen. Is it nature? Because I just rolled nature. Um, uh, you'd have to make a medicine check for this. Oh, okay. Can we roll if we're not proficient in it? Yeah, if you want to. Okay, no, okay. Ooh, never mind. Uh, wait, well, actually, uh, you have... Let me take a look at something real quick. Uh, oh, no, you have an herbalism kit, not a healer's right? Yeah, I've got this useless herbalism kit that does nothing. Uh, it for doesn't all do our anything. terrible needs. Do you know what? I'm gonna go in the tent and play my bongo. Uh, I can give you a little bit from, uh... As you're sitting there and you're, uh... Banging away for a while, as... Those few who have their wits around, they're, uh... Eating. You think back, you know that there are certain, uh... Spells that have been known to cure all manner of diseases and effects on people. Ah, oh, guys, I've got this thing. If someone happens to know the right spell, they may be able to help someone. <laughs> oh my god, Gizzard. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cast Lesser Resto on, um, on Devine. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so is, uh, you reach down and touch Devonay's forehead as you cast your enchantment. Devonay, you find your eyes fluttering open to look down into the somewhat or look up, rather, into the somewhat concerned eyes of Solana. It's dark out. How you doing there, Devonay? What's going on? What happened? We we went through that nefarious fog and um and you collapsed in a heap for a while. How long has it been? A few hours. Maybe six. I don't keep time well. Uh, hmm. uh Quen is, is busy fussing over Devonay and is like, here, drink some water. Are you hungry? Do you want anything to eat? No, I smashed a good berry down her throat. She should be fine. <laughs> you do notice you do feel full. Although yeah, your, throat's, uh, your throat's a little scratchy and it feels like, you know, Solana might have been a little rough getting it down there. <laughs> Devonay will look around and say, are you guys all right? Like, if I got knocked out, what, what happened to you? Well, um... There's, like, this problem where Malik and, um, Artis are kind of, like, you know, having some fun over there, and Dragon B kind of has a crush on Malik, and me and Quinn, we don't like Bog at all, because it makes us vomit. But besides that, he's fine. When Quinn hears the word fog, he, he, he retches a little bit. <laughs> And as you notice in the corner, you see Artis and uh, Malik sort of look over. <laughs> Dude, she's awake. <laughs> yeah, this isn't going to go well for the next, like, two days. But, you know, a lot can happen in two days, good and bad. What about so. Gizzard or Dragonbait? Are they all right? Dragonbait really, really likes Malik, and um, Gizzard's fine. Same old gizzard. Thank, thank God for that, right? 
Well, I don't know about him being fine, but I guess no effect from the mist is is good. Yeah. Miss. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> It's okay. Now, as long as we have you back, right? Uh, sure. It's nice to be around and not be dragged everywhere, I guess. Yeah, that was a little rough. Did your did your back hurt from uh, us like uh, just you know throwing you and tying your foot to like me and just plowing through the woods? No more than those uh, saw blades earlier. Ah, uh, yes, yes, that's all good. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Okay, well, glad you're here. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Uh, uh, Digitio, I agree wholeheartedly. He was... Uh. I was, uh... As Devonay, you come to conscious again, feeling very well rested after a good, like, six-hour nap. Um... It's evening time. Time to set up the watches for the night. Who is taking a watch this evening? I'll take first one. Okay. Anyone else jumping or no? I think Malik should take a watch. <laughs> okay, which watch do you want Malik to take? <laughs> third. <laughs> okay, Malik will take third. As you know, Malik is stoned right now, so why not? Uh, yeah, that's, he'll be, that's he'll be, he'll be Gwen will take the third watch. He'll, he'll tell his buddy to sit down and go to bed. Gizzard! Of being reckless. Gizzard, take a damn watch. Yeah, I'm taking a watch. Okay. Uh, do you want second or fourth? Or is Devin no, taking I'll, I'll, fourth? I'll, I'll, I'll take, take third watch. I just, since I just, I just had a nice long nap. I'll take the third watch. Uh, Quen said Quen would cover third. Unless, sir, we move oh, okay. Quen to second. I, I, was just, I was just kidding around about Malik, but alright, I'll take the second then. Oh. oh. okay. So I need perception checks from the four of you. Yay! Ooh. After that nap, Devonay can yeah. see the truth of things. Holy hell. Okay. I'll see what Quinn gets on uh, his roll. Why is okay? Yeah, Ooh. Quinn. Wow! wow. Ain't, ain't, ain't nothing happening in the last time. <laughs> so is. You guys managed to uh, get at least one of your uh, bestricken allies back in their right mind and, well, in Devonay's case, consciousness. As the uh, evening has made, as you guys have made your way through the evening, Stellana, the first watch seems to be going fairly, uh, fairly easy for you as you're watching anything in specific you'd be doing i decided that i'm going to try the mask of the wild so i'm going to be hopping from tree to tree and shadow to shadow and pretending to be like really stealthy okay i am completely at a loss at that one uh do you have it typed in that you can pop it up or yeah hold on Okay. Oh, so go ahead and make a uh... a what? Sorry. Uh, stealth check. Yee! You feel it's going quite well for you. I'm okay. like playing hide and seek with myself, pretty much. <laughs>
Okay, so is uh, they're going through, going back and forth uh, in and out of the different shadows and everything. They seem to be doing uh, having no problems jumping in and out and in between things. You don't think anyone's noticed anything about you, or even the I'm party so if anyone stealthy. was awake. Nobody's. Nobody has any idea where you are. It's completely broken. Huh. As uh, your watch comes to a close, it's time to awaken Gizzard for his uh, running Gizzard. watch. Gizzard! Gizzard! Wake up! Wake up! Hmm. Yep. Hmm. <clears throat> My turn already. Your turn already! Hey, okay. guess what? I'm really stealthy. One minute you see me here, next minute, and I hop over. You can't see me at all, can you? Can you see me? Do I make a perception check? <laughs> uh, sure, and, uh, sorry, go ahead and make another stealth check. Yeah. Oh, not. As no, she I can jumps see you. and manages yeah. to hide for a second, then sticks her head. Can you see me? <laughs> Yeah, you're right there. I can see you. You're no fun. I'm gonna go <laughs> trance now. Boy. That was odd. <sighs> and I'll go take my watch. Oh, okay, anything in specific you're gonna be doing during your watch? Uh, looking out for giant crocodiles. <laughs> Oh, and I, um, gave him the, uh, stuff that I found before. The 15, uh, darts and, um, 15, uh, shafts and yeah, stuff. The, uh, the stuff to make, uh... And what were you looking for him to make if he chose to? Oh, arrows and blow dart things. Oh, I'll, I'll, you I'll know, just to keep arrows. up maintenance. I'll focus on arrows. Okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead and make a, uh... Woodworking check for me with your toolkit. Uh, it's a rough night tonight. So out of the uh, 15 that you have, you managed to get nine of them. Carving hey. them with little arrows. And I'm like, you know, carving them. I end up breaking most of them and just toss them away. <laughs> bad. Bad wood. And I shall just complete my watch, hopefully. Yep, so your watch manages to go through without a, without much of an issue. You don't see any uh, coming around. That's good. Then, uh, Did we hear the um, wolves from last time? Uh, and for you and Gizzard, no, you haven't heard it. Oh, okay. And it's hard to hear, though. There's a it's rather heavy rain this evening. It's... Gotcha. It's been a long day, and so with that, uh, Gizzard, your watch comes to a close, and it's time for you to go and collect your next member, Quinn. Beautiful. I'll just kind of stand over Quinn. Just look down. Wake up! It is your time for watch. Quinn's uh, just one eye peeps open and flashes a light icy blue and he's just like oh I was having such a wonderful dream but alas I am here yes, all right yes you're right in front you're of right me in front of me mm -hmm. he's he's kind of slow to move and he kind of gets up and um kind of waits for gizzard to lay back down and go back to sleep and then he will just kind of sit back down in the tent, but just kind of look out and look at the rain. Okay, so as you're uh, sitting in your watch when uh hour, hour and a half goes by, and once more in the distance, you start hearing the howl at bay of wolves. Ooh. Oh, the children of the night to free me from my mortal coil. Ah. 
Quen considers a moment just walking into the jungle, letting whatever happens happens. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's pretty emo. Yeah. He won't fight anything. <laughs> um, no, actually, he's he's too lazy right now. He'll just sit right there and watch and listen and wait. Okay, as the rest of you want seems to go again, you hear it much like the first time. Uh, the baying of the wolves off in the distance. They don't sound to, like they're approaching at the moment. Actually, uh, to answer your question, I'm just looking to see... Uh, Saying that I'm actually just checking something here because of a question that Solana posed. I don't believe this qualifies, but go to uh... I apologize. Hmm. Where, where, where? There we are. Okay, yeah, it doesn't say it's a charm effect. Oh, okay. Let me just, uh, give me a second. let me just look at the charm spell here and see how they phrase it. Charm. Uh. No, it doesn't specify a charm effect. Okay. So the way it describes... Because we are, ad since we are elves, we had advantage on charm saves, so I was just wondering. Yeah, no, see, this isn't, uh, well, out of character. This isn't yeah. a charm save, this is madness. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, yeah, it's basically this in this specific form of madness that you and Quen are suffering through at the moment. Uh, let me see, I gotta find your number again. Three. So, uh, the character regards something, the source of madness, with intense, re with intense revulsion. As if it had gotcha. been affected by the and by the antipathy effect of the antipathy sympathy spell. Okay. Gotcha. So, Sorry about that. Thank no, you. No worries. Better always best to make sure. It's not like I haven't made a mistake for sure. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Gizzard, you're evil. So uh fine as your watch goes through again, you hear the wolves a couple of more times, but Nothing really, again, sounding like it's getting any closer. Then it, uh, your watch comes to an end. Time to, uh, awaken Devon A. Um, hmm. How would Quen interact with this? Um, Quen, uh, just, he will reach over and without getting up, just kind of shake Devonay because he's still sitting in the tent, but looking out the open window, or the open little slit in the tent, is just like, Devonay, hey, wake up, wake up, please. I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm shaking me so hard. Um, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to. I won't do that again. Um, it's time for your watch, I guess. Um, is it okay if I still sit here, though? The rain is really pretty. Yeah, you could do yeah, whatever you, you like. Yeah, you could do whatever you like. All right, thanks. And Devonay, anything you'd be doing specific during your watch? Um, she will go outside and, uh, watch the perimeter of the camp. 
Okay. So as uh as you are proceeding to uh take your patrol around the uh outskirts of the camp. You don't seem to notice much going on uh as you're looking around and sort of taking you here again as you're moving that one lone cry of a wolf. Do we know it's a wolf? Uh, it's, uh, you had heard and you were assuming oh wait uh, wolf and Quen had been given uh, basically visions of a wolf uh, through Chi Chi from Chi Chi talking to the plants in the area. Okay, I meant like the two, I know the two big ones were wolves or white wolves, but the lone wolf are we sure that's a wolf? Uh, no, you're just hearing the same sort of noise. You're hearing oh, occasionally okay. the two of them. Well, as far as you guys are concerned, you keep hearing two of them. And okay. they've only ever heard one. Okay. Um, okay. Since Quen has been awake, can he distinguish if whether or not the howls have been coming closer? Go ahead and make, uh, call this an intelligence check. Okay, so uh, we have been awake for through your watch now into the portion of Devonay's. They're literally almost the exact same distance away from you, but like three miles to the west now. You feel almost um, like they're circle. circle. Mm. When um, relays this information to Devonay, they've been going at it for quite some time. It seems like they're always changing position around us. I'm not quite sure what to do about it. What do you think, Devonay? How nice of you to join me outside in the rain. Right. Well, it's nice here and good. Um, mm, Quentin kind of takes a moment and just kind of breathes in the sun of the rain and the air and looks up at the open sky. Mm. It does have a nice charm, doesn't it? Well, it certainly is wet. Do you think the wolves have been following us? Hmm. I heard them last night also. And Chi I sent Chi Chi out to um, talk with the world and gave me visions of white wolves in the area. But I don't think they're directly tracking us. I think they're just keeping an eye on us. Well, yeah. On your watches, make sure you keep an ear out for them. If they get any closer, we might have to do something about them. Quinn, um, just quietly just returns back to the tent and sits with his legs out, feet in the open rain. <laughs> so with that is your uh, listening, Devonay, and continue on the rest of your watch. You hear the occasional bang a couple of more times throughout the night. And again, it's always seems to be coming from somewhere north of you, but you're noticing there is does seem to be sort of a uh, broad sweeping arc between east and uh, northeast and northwest that these uh, sounds are traveling to you. 
as the dawn creeps over the uh, small amount of the trees that you can see through. Your party starts to come to consciousness to start for the day's, uh, day's travel. You guys realize your rain catchers are almost completely full. Uh, given the heavy rain yesterday, and it does not appear like the rain is letting up any time today. What is the, uh, who is planning to navigate today? Uh, I guess I'll try. Okay, so go ahead and, uh, uh Yay! beautiful. And, uh, what speed are we setting for ourselves today? Just a normal pace. Okay. Is it still raining? Yep. Okay, so as you guys are make your way out through the day, uh, anyone have any specific plans they want to, anything they're trying to do during the day? Whenever we're stopping, I'm looking for vegetables, mushrooms, something oh, okay. that I can just shove into my sack. I'm not concerned about what they are, just if they look edible. Okay, I'll go ahead and make a survival check for Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll 2d4. Okay, you managed to find uh, two strange sort of uh, brownish red root vegetables and four mushrooms. Cool. They all look like you could eat them, but you have no idea what they would do to you. Alright, excellent. Okay, uh, Devonay, uh, Solana, Quinn, anything you guys would be doing? Oh, I'm navigating. Do I get to do something else? Oh, uh, well, anything, uh, while you're navigating, anything else you'd be looking to do while you're doing that? Um, mixing stuff up in my herbalism kit just to see what happens. Because I don't know what to do with it. Literally. I might throw it off the boat. <laughs> uh... Um, Quen will be in the back of the boat. He'll be, like, hanging off of it, kind of halfway with his fingers and hand just kind of slooshing around on the surface of the river, looking very melancholy, looking at all the ripples and the way that everything just is, and we'll just feel this sense of ennui. Okay, and Malik will be, uh, Strangely for how uh, you've seen Malik behave before, even in the pouring rain, uh, the fiddle is out being played. It's not at all one of Malik's best performances, given the uh, water pouring on the uh, fiddle, but hey, reckless person on acid does some crazy stuff. <laughs> so very, is, uh, true. very true. As you guys are traveling about two hours in along the river heading towards uh, Atascahakla, you guys come across another swath in the forest. Again, much like you saw when you entered in uh, a day or two ago, about a 25 foot berth of uh, trees knocked down on the ground footsteps uh, rather large paw prints on the uh, ground leading on either bank okay this doesn't look good guys we have some major stuff going on Thank you, JJ. I was trying to get pulled up. It was being slow. Oh, nice! I can... Well, I can identify this stuff. Uh, Solana, something to that is she has just pointed out to the group of you on 
either side of you as you're traveling along this river towards Atas Kahakla, there is about a 25 foot swath of forest that has just been basically stomped down into the ground. I'm sorry, out of character, does this mean I can use my herbalism kit um, to check on like um, what stuff is in city nature? Like for so plants know. and stuff? Oh, those are going to be bad Patrons, why don't we Okay. Uh, yeah, it looks so. Uh, JJ, yeah. that's the stuff from uh, Xanthers, right? Correct. Yep. There you go. So basically, it looks like uh, when you're looking at uh, plants and stuff, we have the herbalism kit. Um, yeah, I'd say uh, any checks you make to identify plants or roots, anything like that, you'd make an advantage you, uh, when you have your kit. Cool, thanks. So you see a wide open swath on either side. Okay, this is not good because stuff might have gone through here. Um, oh, um, what do you think we should do, guys? Uh, because it's going to go and inspect it and just kind of see... Like, is it just trees that have been knocked down, or is there any, like, anything around? Uh, go ahead and, uh, make either a, uh, well, if, see, it depends on how you're asking it. Um, I'd say go ahead and make a survival check, we'll call this. Alright. Yikes, I cannot roll tonight. <laughs> uh, it's, uh... As you walk over, it's something big pushed its way through here. It's about all you got. I suggest we stay away from these. Let's keep to the forest. I concur. So right now you guys are on a river heading westbound towards the Tazkahakla. This path is uh, basically it stretches up north and then arcs a little bit off towards the east and then south and slightly to the west almost like a little S where the river's running through the middle of it okay. and you can see paw prints uh, on both sides of it let's keep moving let's not worry about what made this because that would be bad <laughs> Gizzard's getting hungry. You can hear the lips smacking in the background. <laughs> hey, you guys. Continue through. And as... You guys get it. Gets to be about, uh... Like 3.30, 4 o'clock as you guys are still, uh... Trying on the river, heading west. Uh, do me a favor and uh, everyone who'd like to go ahead and make a perception check. Oof. Solana's awake. Gizzard's awake. Devonay's awake. Oh. Man. Quan, you're just not Quinn's feeling this journey, journey, journey today, you know? Quan's feeling really sad today, guys. It's, I'm sorry. It's just, this is who he is. Oh. A mess. So, something's bugging him and doesn't hear the heavy footfalls in the distance. How distant? Uh, go ahead and make an intelligent... Uh, I'll let that perception check. Uh, it's not right on top of you, but you think they're somewhat close. But it's also lar it's large, so it's hard to... You know it's bigger than you are. The gate's longer than yours. Which direction is it coming from? It's coming from the south. Oh, like towards us. Oh, crap. 
going west. Yeah, but if it's coming towards us from the south, then maybe it'll, like, reach us. How fast can we paddle? I can cast that thing again. So we can't be crazy. stealthy. Yeah. Oh. We can be so stealthy in our canoe of stealth. <laughs> So as you guys think, uh, just keep in mind, uh, stealthing slows your speed down. Oh um, yeah. Oh no. Let's let's go. Right, so, so you've got two ways. You can do nothing. You can see what happens. You can try to speed up and risk the exhaustion. Whereas right now you've got two uh, two members who are afraid of the mist. Two who this are is true. balls. <laughs> this is also true. Um, at least you don't have one unconscious. That's always a good thing. Or, uh, again, you can try pushing that and you risk the uh, um, exhaustion. You've got the stealth. You've got all sorts of different options out there. For you. I think the easiest thing for our two uh, slightly odd friends is to paddle faster. I'm not sure how good at being stealthy they would be in their state. Do you want to do it? Like paddle to exhaustion, or just paddle at a pretty steady pace. Paddle faster than we're moving now. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so as you guys uh, start picking up the pace, uh, Gizzard, what are you doing as your as this is being discussed? I guess I'm uh, doing exactly the same thing. Because <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, and Quen yourself? Um, Quen welcomes the embrace of death and will not paddle faster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Artis... Actually, uh... Uh, artist has disadvantage because he's on acid, but we'll see what. Okay. Artist is going to help with the paddling. Oh, good. Um, let's check Melek. Just making these as intelligence rolls to see whether or not they'd have the uh, cognitive uh, ability to realize, hey, this might be trouble. Nice. Okay. Uh, not great, but uh, uh, Malik is... Uh, Malik jumps in too. <laughs> uh, it's, it, yes, JJ, but <laughs> you guys are going to figure it out. <laughs> uh, Digitio is recommending an alchemy jug jet engine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so as you guys start paddling uh, and really ripping into this, you definitely feel like you're making some distance. And as you continue pushing yourselves harder and harder, you notice that the footsteps you are hearing sort of fade into the distance. And then, as you guys continue on through the day, you find yourself pulling the canoe over as you've reached uh, the end of this little stretch of the river. As you find yourselves approaching... The side Yee. of a Taz Kahakla. It's gonna What's be so like pretty. Like? So is this is in my book here. That is the wrong book. That's the player's handbook. So let me grab my uh, page here. Okay, so 
Taza, taza, taza. So, as you uh, approach, you find yourself standing up on the side of a cliff wall. As you look down towards the base beneath you, you can see a river running. It's about a hundred and uh, between a hundred to hundred and twenty feet beneath you. You see uh, this river running through. And the cliff walls are lined with row upon row of multicolored coral. Uh, as you're looking at it, uh, you don't even need a check to realize that this is much too far out of the water to still be alive. All the coral is long, long dead. But the myriad of rainbow reds and greens and yellows and orange the colors still remain brightly hued as it was in its day uh, the it turns this gorge with the thin trickling river beneath it into a rather beautiful pseudo seascape especially with the rainwater running down all of the coral on as you're looking in and sort of glancing across the uh, chasm towards the other side, you see mixed among the corals uh, intact skeleton, uh, skeletons of plesiosaurs, giant sharks, and all manner of other large, long-dead sea creatures. Wait, can I reach the coral, or is it down in the river basin? It's down, um, it's down along the wall. If you you know, you sort of stick your head out and look straight down on the wall you're standing on, and there's probably a couple of pieces within 15, 20 feet down. Spider climb! Oh, that's right. D druids. So as you uh, cast your spell and proceed to uh, walk down, uh, while Solana's making her way down to try to, I'm assuming, trying to loot some of the coral? Yes! Okay. Um... Let's see. Uh, what is everyone else doing? And uh, it's 1d6 per 10 feet, so it. Uh, uh, at 120 feet, that would be 12d6. Rough ballpark, 42 damage. Wow, I rolled really low on that. Um, If you jumped up first, it might, you know, depending on how high you jump, it could be more. <laughs> uh, Devon A. Quen, while Gizzard is contemplating suicide, what would you guys be doing? Um, Quen thinks about jumping too, um, but he remembers that no, can't do that. He needs to do some, figure something else out. Um, and he'll say, well, whoever wants to go down, I know a spell that can help. Feather fall. Fall like feathers. Then you really can be dust in the wind. This is like really depressing. <laughs> Devin, what would. Oh, Who has a map of the area that we received at the beginning. I'm not I sure think I do. Alright, Devin I... would like to look at it, but if you're down collecting coral, she can't. Okay, well, I come back up with a bunch of coral, and you're... I Go ahead and touch... make a strength check for me. <laughs> oh, me? Yeah, corals, oh, not... we're not picking leaves off a tree here. <laughs> Hey, look okay. at you. I know, right? Okay, uh, go ahead and roll. Given the quantity, I will say, go ahead and roll 2d6 for me. Ooh. Okay, so you managed to get a uh, one fairly decent sized piece of like a uh, coral pink, almost like a reddish pink uh, 
piece of coral, and then you manage to get uh, five smaller pieces of uh, almost like a uh, lime greenish yellow coral. I go, Daphne, Daphne, do you want to walk with me? We can walk together up and down. Because I can make you walk. Because spider climb, spider climb, spider climb. Who wants spider climb with me? Actually, I think out of game, you can only do spider climb on one person at a time. Oh. Okay. Do you want to spider climb this time? Daphne will look over the cliff. Eh, nah, no thanks. Okay. I go back down. <laughs> okay, uh, go ahead and make another strength check for me. Okay. Let's go ahead and roll another 2d6. Definitely, at this point, uh, go ahead and make a perception check for me. Okay, with that, you managed to get uh, three pieces of like an orangish coral. And uh, four pieces of a uh, much brighter green, almost like a, uh, I guess I call it like a, uh, not a lime, uh, almost like a Kentucky bluegrass grass green. Those footsteps are coming back. Oh dear. And they're getting close. And as you're watching, you notice for the first time since you've met him, Artis is almost freaking out. Is it because he's on beyond, drugs? Beyond what you would think the drug, uh, the hallucinations would be. He is actively like full on shaking paranoid type freak out what's he saying Quinn you said you had feather fall right all yes. he keeps saying is oh my god oh my god they found me they found me they're here they found me they found me they're here they're here yes I know feather fall Darn, we're one person too many. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a climber's pack, so if you cast Featherfall on these other people, you guys can make it, and I'll climb down, and Solana has spider climb, so we should be good. All right. Um, when, uh, takes out a little piece of feather from his pocket and will hold it in his hand and imbue it with um, arcane energy and magic and then blow it up into the air and it'll glow and then shimmer and the same shimmer alights the feet of my companions. So is... This is happening, uh, Devon, I'm assuming you're in the climbing gear and starting to climb down? Well, is Gizzard actually saying out loud what he's saying in chat? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would. <laughs> Leave Dragon Bait behind. What's he done so far? He's no, 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 no. Leave him behind. There's... All he does is make smells. You didn't seem to do anything useful yet. What do you, you do? You just eat, you I just think, eat stuff. I stuff. think nice smells are very useful. Guys, we don't Guys, have time we don't for this have conversation. conversation. Quen, well, take I have to spell go. You hear the cracking of trees coming from behind you. Quen okay, leaps I walk into in. the into the into the off the cliff and gently flutters down. All right, I'll start climbing down with my climbing gear, because I'm not sure if Quinn included me in his spell or not. 
Oh, yeah. no, because I thought you were going to climb down. Okay, so Quinn is now floating softly. Uh, Devon is climbing. Uh, did anyone tell Artis or Dragonbait that they were casting the spell on them? Are they aware of it? Oh, and I did mention and I did. the spell fall, Featherfall. I, I did say that out loud. So I'm assuming oh. they know about spells. And I'm so, sure so. Artis would be eager, wouldn't be far away from us. No, not at, all. no not at all. Yeah. There. There. Okay. So we have... Okay, so you can hit five people. So we've got it on Quen, Malik. I'm assuming you included Gizzard. Um, I don't know. So it says five, but is that five including myself or not including myself? That's including you. Five total. Five total. Oh, okay. Um, did I cast it on Gizzard? I don't know. Gizzard, do you want Featherfall? You want it's tempting, it? but it's also tempting to just jump and see how much damage I can take. Ooh, let's give it the old college try. <laughs> sure, I'm just gonna jump. <clears throat> okay, so is Quen is in the process of casting Featherfall. Gizzard leaps. So. Uh, Definitely, for all purposes, you are included in the spell, as Gizzard is just... Uh, go ahead and make an athletics check for me, uh, Gizzard. Let's see how, uh, how well you jump. And as this is happening, and Devonay is you nice. tie off your uh, climbing kit and start to jump down, Quen is casting his incantation, and... Quen, Melek, Artis, and Dragonbait jump as all of a sudden crashing through the trees. Three large frost giants. Oh my goodness gracious. Come charging out and stop at the lip looking down at the group of uh, little people floating down the down the uh whatchamacallit chasm down the chasm towards the river I didn't Gizzard, think frost giants in... would be here go ahead and make an intelligence check as you're walking down looking up at them and as that 20 <laughs> uh, Just because I have it. <laughs> yeah, man, we're about done for the evening, so time to use it. Yeah. As uh, Solana, as you look up and realize the frost giants here, you know that they don't typically reside in the jungles of Chult. They're here looking for something. They have to be. It's the only explanation. And then you look at a petrified, freaking out artist. Oh, floating down I get it. As one of the giants up top reaches into a bag on their hip, pulls out a boulder and winds up. Oh, nice. <laughs> and that's where we're going to end tonight's session. Ooh. With ah. Gizzard falling through the air. Tumbling towards the ground. <laughs> and nice. the frost giant standing at the top of the cliff with a boulder. Way to go, team. <laughs> uh, That's thank terrifying. Thank you very much for everyone uh, hanging out with us. We ran a little late this evening, but uh, definitely going to be interesting to see how our teammates do with this is they have a good like round and a half or two rounds before they hit ground with this thing uh, looking with this 
three of them looking down at him, so... We'll have to see what happens with a gizzard falling through the air, but before we uh, disappear for the evening... We need to decide uh, who gets the nat 20 for tonight. I said gizzard for trying to team the crocodile. Devin A, and Quen, any other uh, votes beside Gizzards for, uh... <laughs> you know, we're, we're not sure if it was a taming attempt or a, uh, you know, feeding attempt, but one way or another, it didn't really go too well. No, it didn't, but it was kind of funny. Oh, <laughs> well, the feeding went okay, I guess. <laughs> uh, okay, very valid point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fed it. Just, yeah. <laughs> fed it yourself. <laughs> Okay, so we got one vote for Gizzard. Anyone else? Uh, Digiteo. <clears throat> because he kind of promised to make a promotional poster of King Gizzard and Anthony Bourdain. Oh, <laughs> dear God. And their future. <laughs> okay, so we now have some uh, Digiteo and one for Gizzard. I vote Gizzard for his bravery. And falling and taming a wild beast. Don't mistake bravery with stupidity. He did I mean, die is twice. There a difference? <laughs> is there a functional difference? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> okay. Kaplan, yeah, anything? I'm good with giving it to Gizzard. Okay. So we've got three votes for Gizzard this week. So, Gizzard, you will get the nat 20. Uh, as for uh, Solana, Devon A, and Quen, you will all have uh, DM's inspiration to start next week. And, uh... And, uh... JJ uh, Digitio did say it may take a little bit, but he will be working on it, so... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know what, Digitio? We're gonna... Uh, we're gonna give our... We will give our Twitch chat a nat 20 for next week as well. And specifically, we will give it to Digitio. So, uh, keep in mind, he could give it to one of you, or he could give it to a frost giant. <laughs> no, don't do that! <laughs> oh. We'll have to see how Digitio uses his net 20 next week as well. Depends how he's feeling. Uh, exactly Feel true. Feel nice! <laughs> In the meantime, uh, thank you very much. Thank you again to Many Sided Dice for their wonderful uh, Lost Artifacts of Greygast book as well as uh, Nightshade Creations and their wonderful uh, little toys and dice trays and whatnot. And with that, uh, say goodnight, everyone. We'll be back next week. Good night, everyone. Uh, Mr. Uh, producer Man, produce us on home. <laughs>